Welcome to the VRF Wizard. We are going to cover construction contingency. So there's basically three types of contingency during the design phase, construction, and owner's contingency. So what is a contingency? Basically it's an unanticipated cost, cost that could occur but is not certain to occur. So during the design uh, you could have a ROM estimate, which is a rough order of magnitude. Uh, so the contingency is going to be high on that. For projects that are in their conceptual stage of development, you can expect to have a higher contingency factor than that of a fully designed contract document set. Because as a design progresses, the contingency factor can be reduced because you're getting more detail and definition of the design which you can put accurate cost to. The construction contingency is to cover anticip unanticipated or unpredictable cost that could occur during construction and after you have signed a contract. You could also call it a, an allowance. In the early stages of development when assembling a budget this number will be at its highest because the project has not been fully developed to a point where you can itemize components for a detailed cost analysis. There are costs that can't be identified until more detail is added during the design phase, which warrants a higher contingency value starting at the conceptual stages of the project and then reducing it as the design becomes more complete and you get final construction plans. There are different names and categories of contingency such as design contingency, we said, construction contingency, and owner's contingency. No matter what you call it, it will cover some anticipated or unanticipated cost. So the design contingency uh, can include uh, to cover errors and omissions in the design documents, changes and upgrades in the design. It's impossible to expect the engineer to develop a perfect set of construction documents. So during the design phase, when they're doing the budgets at the design phase, uh, there could be a contingency factor for those allowances. The owner contingency, so the owner may cover a contingency or an allowance for scope changes that is unforeseen at that time, but which the owner could be financially liable for. And then you will have your construction contingency so this could include uh, unanticipated cost during construction, items such as liquidated damages, bad weather, security issues, overtime, job delays, regulatory compliance ambiguity, uh, site access, and other conditions out of the direct control of the contractor. Uh, so you include it whenever you consider an item a risk. The contingency factor is basically analyzing and mitigating your risk. So the question becomes, what is the correct amount of contingency to use at each stage of the design or budgeting process? Depending on which expert you ask, the amounts vary. The better you can define the project based on historical data of completed projects, with similar programs or room types, the tighter you can make your contingency factor. The less that the project is defined and the less historical cost data that you could you have from similar projects uh, that you can use for parametric data, the higher your contingency factor is going to be. The more risk of a project, the more contingency you want. As your risk factor goes up, your contingency needs to go up. So, also Renovation projects should have a higher contingency value than new construction because during renovation you never know what you're going to uncover. So a simple example of a contingency factor would be if you had $100,000 in cost and you're going to cover a 5% contingency because everything's pretty well defined. There's a few gray areas so you're going to carry a small contingency at 5%. So 5% of 100,000 would be a $5,000 contingency. That's the simple explanation for construction contingency.
Please subscribe to our channel and visit our website at www.vrfwizard.com.